I guess I'll call this special meeting to order. Uh, we stand for pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have roll call. Uh, Mayor Perry. Here. Council President Oliveras. Present. Councillor Hensley is absent. Councillor Jackman. Here. Councillor Lewis. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Okay, well, I guess all we got the one on the agenda, and that's the uh, new facility use and liability, po liability policy. So, the reason we are meeting here tonight is that a, a group of people from the area decided to schedule the use of the city park over the weekend uh, for a garage sale slash farmer's market type event. And part of the genesis, I believe, is that last year a city resident came and asked if they could hold a garage sale on this uh, the city property because they didn't have a property themselves that was suitable for it. And the city does allow that kind of thing to happen. but. From what I understand, the councilor was the council was under the impression from that conversation that it was just for that individual and that was a one-time event. Uh, what apparently uh, the the lead organizer of the event scheduled for this weekend told me is that the individual who made this request last year uh, was telling other people actually anybody can do it. So last year there were a few people who joined her for that joint yard sale, uh, and then they said, "Great, we're going to do this every year from now on," and they thought that. The council's permission for that one yard sale was just a blanket permission for this event to happen regularly going forward. Um, and what happened was uh, these people, I guess, started planning a little while ago. Said, okay, we're going to have a farmer's market slash garage sale here in Sodaville, and we're going to use the park. And they've been putting flyers all over the county going, hey, come to Sodaville the third Saturday of every month, and we're going to have a garage sale and we're farmer's market. On. Yes, uh, from July through October. So uh, they didn't come to us to see if that was still okay. They didn't see if anything was scheduled here. Um, I learned about it secondhand because uh, one of the people who was planning on participating uh, called me up and asked me if there was a place for somebody to plug in to put their uh, shave ice machine. And I said, no, there, there isn't. Um, and at first I thought, well, it's still cool that there's an event like this happening. Uh, but as I started talking to the people involved, it looked like this was... Uh, they they took a lot of steps and made a lot of assumptions and kind of relied on a lot of hearsay to get this all planned out. Um, the rules we have in place for the regulation of the use of the city parks are really vague, vague <laughs> lack, lackluster, enforcement is difficult, and it results in a million liability headaches for the city. In 2012, we passed a resolution that adopted park rules, but it didn't adopt them as an ordinance. It's just a list of rules. Now, this list of rules says that if anybody's going to sell, vend, etc., and it is, it is broadly construed to ensure that this covers every possible person or entity exchanging money for something, uh, has to get written permission from the city recorder first. So as the rules are written under that resolution, I could just say, yeah, you can go ahead and do this event on Saturday. And you know, ordinarily, I think this is a good kind of event for us to be supporting and sponsoring. This is the kind of thing that the, st the city's comprehensive plan talked about. So I'm excited that somebody's taking the initiative to do this. The problem is that they did it without asking us. Right. Somebody's taking the initiative besides us. Yeah. So it's it's been ten years since uh, this uh, the city's park rules were passed, uh, and nobody even remembered them. I think. Uh, the ones down here. Yeah, they're, they're posted physically here and they're posted physically over there. I, I talked to that, that person several times about where the rules are posted. And for example, I recently put them on the city's ordinance website so you can go and read them. And they, and they, they said, well, I, I didn't know that was there. I said, it's in the newsletter. They said, well, I live outside the city limits so I don't get the newsletter because she's not on city water. And I said, well, they're posted physically at the city park. And they said, well, you never know whether things are updated when they're posted physically. You see a tattered sign or something like that. So I, there was just a, a list of... I don't know. It was, it was difficult to try and communicate the the liability issues that we are facing because of what's here. Uh, so ultimately, what I, I really want to know is whether the council is, you know, uh, okay with me just 
allowing this event this one time. Uh, next week we are going to have a city council meeting where we consider changes to our ordinances uh, and adopting some uh, city policies that um, protect us liability-wise a little bit more. Or if you think, you know, it's been 10 years and this circumstances are a little too much for us to just jump in uh, with an outdated list of rules. Um, I, as the, the rules are written right now, I believe I could just unilaterally authorize this, but 10 years is a, a long time to uh, go before really thinking through this situation. So that's why we're meeting here tonight to see whether or not you want me to implement the uh, park rules under that resolution, or if you think we should wait. So is it somebody trustworthy, or somebody that lives in Southern They live outside of town. And can you give a flavor for your discussion with her? Oh, I think the phone clocked in an hour and 26 minutes long on Wednesday night. Um, and I, I talked with them a few times, and then the mayor talked with them yeah. uh, uh, yesterday morning. Um, and they, yeah, it was it was a long call. Um, I'm trying to think if I can get all the, the salient points down. Um, you know, there some some things were said to me specifically that I felt were rather unprofessional. Um, and yeah, you know, in uh, respect. Well, I guess they they are personally acquainted with my landlord, and they talked about trying to communicate with me about city business via my landlord. Um, and they claim that they have done that several times, uh, and that I, I I know my landlord used to work in town, so she probably has friends here. Um, they were like, "Yeah, you don't even live in this town, so it's not really, not really your community." Uh, That's what they're telling you. Yes. And weren't they kind of? I don't want to use the word. Weren't they intimating that they had friends in higher places that would ensure that this happened? Uh, yeah, there was a, a an allusion to. Um, somebody uh, locally, politically connected, they wanted to see if they could bring this up to uh, for a resolution. Uh, I said, no, that, that person cannot actually do that. Um, it's a, they identified a, a member of the Lynn County Republican Central Committee, uh, and that is an elected body, but not with authority over city councils. It's a political party. So. And that meeting I was at with Alex and her the woman, uh, she said they would be willing to sign any waivers for liability and stuff like that for it. But, it's, but I don't really like the fact this bill is a soda bill community instead of just a, you know, yard sale. So here's my thoughts. Susie asked if she could, and we said yes. Peggy said, can we have a community yard sale? And we said, wait. She was going to go out and look at how to get it cleaned up, et cetera. So the community was an idea, but it didn't come to fruition yet. And this person made assumptions, and I feel bad for her, but scheduled put flyers on Facebook all over without checking with the city to make sure there wasn't another event here, which is a little upsetting. And looking at farmers markets, there's a whole bunch of USDA, Oregon Department of Agriculture, all sorts of things to have farmers markets and what you can sell. And this thing says Sotaville Community and Farmers Market. So that kind of gives me a bit of a concern on what our liability is, and so. Yeah. I understand what you're saying there. Probably the best thing to do then would be call the health department. You don't work tomorrow? Uh, well, I, I am working, but I have meetings in Albany all day tomorrow, okay. unfortunately. And I say probably the smartest thing to do would be call the health departments and just let the health department know that they're having a farmer's market up here and they'll just do a surprise visit. My only concern is it says soda bill. Right. So it looks like we're condoning, we're sponsoring, we're supporting, and we don't have, what do we have to cover us and to make sure not? There is a part of me that's like, wow, that's kind of gutsy to do all these plans without even checking with the site to make sure it's okay. Well, for I scheduling. Agree, I, I agree with you there. So. Yeah. I, I guess the only thing I would say is they've gone to all the trouble to advertise all this thing. Let them do it this time around and give them a stern warning. You're going to do this again? You need to come to the council meeting and you see how it works. We do. We do want to promote something like yeah. this in our city, mm -hmm. a certain, certain amount. But I. Yeah. But we and have she, told our other resident, no, you can't yeah. just go and do it. But somebody who said, I'm just going to go and do it. It's on her, 
that she went and did all. I mean, it's great marketing. That's wonderful. Let's have her help us. But to tell our own resident, no, we got to think about it, and then somebody else comes in and just schedules it and does it, that just doesn't seem yeah, like we're supporting our resident. Phase, so. Absolutely. And as far as signing a waiver, it's not even worth the paper it's written on. Yeah, and that's that's the difficulty right now. The park rules say that we're allowed to, or the the park rules say that the the city recorder is unilaterally authorized to approve sales like this. So I could just go ahead and do it. Um, the form that I created said, you know, if you're going to do this in order to get my written permission, you have to sign a, a statement that says you are going to follow all of the park rules. Um, but that doesn't really cover us liability wise. Um, one, you know, our, our CIS insurance will cover us liability-wise. If somebody does something stupid and wants to sue the city, then we have we our our insurance will protect us um, and make sure that you know we don't bear the the brunt of a lawsuit. Um, the problem is that um, we don't have any, the that is kind of the limit of what we're able to do in terms of liability mitigation. Um, there, I can't add something that says, if you're going to do this, you agree to indemnify, indemnify and hold harmless the city, because that's not currently in the park rules. So even that would be something that's, that should be in there. Uh, the way the rules are written right now, I can't add that uh, without the council authorizing it, and that means the council has to pass an ordinance, and that takes... you got to have a hearing and all that kind of good stuff. So. Yeah, and we couldn't just do that in uh, you know 24 hours uh <laughs> Notice we're unless good. we were going to read the entire thing out loud, you know, and spend a few hours doing that, and we don't have that kind of time. Yeah, Alex, I explained that to her at the meeting we had with the woman. And yeah. then she also mentioned something about Susie, and I said, well, that, I said, the reason why we're, I'm so left about it is we have a citizen around here that is, ever since she's been off the council, she's been trying to scuttle the city any way she can, and I don't want to, I don't want to make, give her any more fuel for the fire. And I told her exactly who I was talking about, too, because... It's on record that she has been at the meetings causing hate and discontent. So I didn't think I was doing anything yet. Un, un, yeah, author, or, unorthodox for that. And if I did, well, I'm sorry, but I did anyway. Because I did talk to another resident around town here, and he says that she, this woman is a pretty upstanding, upstanding person. And she said, because I said, mentioned about, tell her something about Susie. She says, this woman won't, won't talk to Susie about that. Won't bring that up to Susie at all. Because he knows her and she, he trusts her. But then again, you know, nice sit with a resident, but that, and I can tell who that is too if you want me to, but I just, you know, anyway, I don't know. Well, I guess the next question I have is, what is the difference between somebody holding an event like this and people coming up here having a picnic and falling down the hill? Um, there are specific council rules in place about that. So right now, it's just like, yeah, you can come here and you can recreate. But the council has a rule that says if you're going to sell something, you need permission. Um, and that's the, the big well, difference. Okay. So what I'm asking is, I guess, if they're going to come here, and do we know if they're going to sell anything? Yeah. I mean, that is, that is the intent. Okay. The, the express intent of the event is to... Community yard sale and farmer's <clears throat> market. Yeah. The uh, there's day. also uh, recreational immunity. So I mean, we're, we're immune because we're a park. People can't just come here and do something stupid. That's kind of on them, and that's something regulated through the state. Whereas an event where you're coming and selling, recreational immunity doesn't really apply. The person did indicate that she's probably on figure she's only got to be maybe five to seven dinners at most of the first one of these two. So it's going to probably be a really small event. But then again, you never know either. Yeah, and the, the good thing we can do, you all received uh, copies of the ordinance we're going to look at next week to try and better regulate this, um, and also, you know, charge facility use fees so that we can comp staff time and, you know, yeah. make sure the city is compensated for yeah. using our resources. Um, the other thing we can do, um, and that's also in the packet, is to um, uh, make sure that we're appointing the uh, Recreation and Community Affairs Committee that was created by the... Um, the comprehensive plan in 1980 because if there's a group of citizens who wants to plan events like this and you know get get community awareness involved that's something the comprehensive plan says we we should be doing and supporting uh, even with staff time you know that's the that's the idea behind it um and you know that'll that'll save a lot of grief if we have an official city body that's you know organizing and controlling events like this and Alex did say that a non-resident can, there, you can have one non-resident on the committee, so we could definitely offer to that lady if she wanted to sit on the committee. 
because she's not a resident. Yeah, it also says the school district superintendent gets to sit on it. It's like, well, uh, we don't even have we a school district. One. There's no Sodaville <laughs> school district anymore. Yeah, you call Mary and Ari, she'd get over here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, those are the, yeah, I think the, the main concerns liability lies. One, if we get sued, we'll be able to pay for it, basically, through our liability insurance. But we can't stop them from suing us if they do something stupid. Uh, not without updating our rules, and we can't do that tonight because we did not have enough time for a notice. Um, and we also can't require them to be insured. That's something that's pretty common at events like this: is to require people to have proof of their own liability insurance. Cost ten bucks. Yeah, you know, CIS offers really great low-cost policies for community members and businesses who want to do specific things like this. So it's easy for us to point people to that and go, "Hey, you do need insurance, but it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Go to CIS." Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that the fees for using the park are low, but not, you know, so low that it means nothing, but not too high that it's prohibitive. Right. And what my thought, my, kind of my thoughts about it too, is the other resident wanted to think about, she's thinking about having a citywide garage sale where they not like just one localized around. Yeah, I think and she just, she just wanted something like this to go on so she could, yeah. so her and her friends could sell stuff. And she wasn't, I don't think this hurt her feelings at all. And I could, I could go down and talk to her and find out if, what, she, what her thoughts about this are too, but and I didn't bring it on this yet, but I don't think there'd be a complaint about that. I don't right. know. I think I don't think it, anything. I think in her mind is years ago they had a citywide garage mm -hmm. so, Yeah, but you had to go to each house. <clears throat> yeah, you actually came in and you got, you got a map here. But y'all talked about how <laughs> the, 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 the reason, people were here and the signs and the mess that had to get be cleaned up. And but that was that was different. That that was our when we had our cleanup day. So we had there a, was, I thought there was also the garage sale because she was gotcha, talking yeah. about yeah, the community both garage sale yeah. on who would get rid of take the right the, the non profit or something would come yeah. and take. Yeah, that that too. That that was it kind of, I think they might have been tied together a little bit. I don't know, but like I say, the the reason why I, I was one that put the motion in to stop the community cleanup days because it was just costing the city money. Even though the dumpsters were going to us for free, by the time they. No one was babysitting them from the time they showed up Friday until they left on Monday. So they got over full, which means we had to go out there. And I spent four and a half hours, the last one David done this, unloading the garbage out of um, the garbage bin for the garbage company to haul it off. The scrap metal bin that we had out there went to the scrap yard with dirty diapers and garbage in it. And now he's the guy that's doing, donating the scrap, scrap bin for us and no more. He's never going to do it again. So that's why I vetoed that one. I, beat, I, I made the motion to stop the community garage sales because well, it was, our, a community it, it was it was costing us too much money to pay our our staff to do the Police. stuff that stuff that should have been volunteer work to get yeah, done. Science and stuff. So that's why I I was one that put the mo I was one to put the motion forth and got it covered to stop both of these things. But yeah, it's been a few years now, and we have got different crew here, and I think we can do a, do pretty good with something if we. I want to go back into it. So, what do we need tonight? Yes or no on this? Yeah, it's basically a yes or no. You know, do you think that does is the council okay with me just um, in, uh, following the rules as they are and allowing me to authorize uh, this, these uh, people to be here selling things this weekend for that event, or would the council prefer to have me not uh, implement these rules as written? and wait until we have uh, ordinances in place that protect us a lot more legally and allow the events to be held in a way that protects everybody involved. And the person that says she wants to put this on says she will come to our next council meeting to uh, to get things started the right way. She's, you know, willing to do all that, so. Time to write her name down. Write my name down? No. Oh. <laughs> So I don't know. I, you know, sometimes if if you allow it to be done with it sets precedence, and, yeah. Well, and and to make it so that it's not easy, so that they understand that the next time they have to go through the proper channels and everything, then it makes it so that they do it right next yeah. time. And that's that's what I'm thinking. This woman's thinking. She she just thought it'd be okay and. You know, all of a sudden she's got all the public publicity out there, and boom, she gets a gets a stop sign stuck up under her face, and she. But when would you yeah. ever have an event without checking about the site? 
You know, you wouldn't go to a restaurant without, you know, you know it's busy, yeah. especially for a party of 40 versus one or two. I, I think I feel bad if if it ends up that she's not able to have it, that she's done all this work without checking to see if it was okay. Yeah. But that's not on us. Yeah, you know, sometimes in a small town like this, um, you know, back before I became a councilman, I was the uh, citizens committee. And the Everybody, you know, I go around and talk to all the citizens in Sotaville and, and they give me all their ideas and stuff and then I come back with it and Judy would shoot me down and so the whole city kind of got so to the point of a talk. bad taste in their right. mouth and I, I would hate to see that with the city of Sotaville. Yeah. Because I think that it would be good if they, if, you yeah, know. We come together, yeah. Right. Okay. This, this was a friendly town when I moved up. I've been here in this town 50 years. We moved here in 1969, and I knew every, I knew every resident. I go, down the, I, go, I go downtown, even downtown Lebanon, a lot of people come and talk to me. You know. I don't think I know. it's unfriendly to follow the rules, and she's not a resident. Yeah. She lives outside of the city. You know, I, I, I just think it's, it's wiser to do it right the first time. It's so much easier to do it right the first time than to undo it and try to do it right. You know, if we let it go forward without it doing everything it should be doing, and then come back and say, well, you know, next time, you need to make sure. But Yeah, but she definitely knows that uh, the rules are going to change real quick. I think that's the last thing that's on one of the emails or something. Did well, she... that's why we have all of us to vote. Right. Because it's not just one person's decision. <laughs> yeah. Well... I'm kind of in agreement with Brian. I don't know, maybe I'm understanding Brian is to make things better and let's make it better from here and go forward. And go ahead and let this, let this happen and this weekend. Let it happen and then get the ordinance changed to make this happen. Is this correct? That's what I thought. So, there was a phone call that somebody asked me to make that I never got a response from it, so. Is that what you're saying? That's what it. That's what I, my opinion is. Yeah. For whatever. And I, I talked to Jeff just for the meeting here. He's not going to be here, and he said that he's willing. He's apprehensive about it also, like you and I, Adina. But he also says that we could, if we want, if he was okay with it, let it happen this one time. But next it's, time they're going to have to go through rules, regulations, and and we're going to change things to what's going to cost them, and it's going to it's going to help the city and them both. So. Hmm. Yeah. Strange. What? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. I'm saying yes, let her do it, let the people go for it, do it this time, but we need to get the ordinance changed or whatever the case may be. So it covers her behind. So you make a motion for that? I'll make a motion that we uh, grant these people the Use. One time use. use. One time use. I think the, the, the suggested motion then would be I move to allow the city recorder to um, enforce resolution 2012. Let me make sure I get this one done right. It's or, yeah, ordinance. Yeah, I know. When we got to make sure I get this down correctly for you. Yesterday, yesterday was a really nice day all no, day. It was gorgeous it's yesterday. Ninety four. Wow. It doesn't last forever, thank goodness. Because I'm applying pesticides, I have to wear long pants. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. My shirt is usually so. so like we're a melting unit. Yeah. Could say I move. To uh, reaffirm the city recorder's authority granted by resolution 1211. That's the motion I'm making. Okay. Got a second on that? No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Me. I. No. Whatever I say. I've never opposed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Might as well. Opposite of nigh, aye. Nay. Yeah. Nay. Nay. Is that 
the end of what you need? Yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we adjourn. Have a second on that one. I'll Please. second that one. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 That Record time. I need it all. All this. I'm going to make sure you get this. So, I mean, Brian was the one who seconded the. Yes. Okay. All right, Adina moved to adjourn, and then no, you moved to adjourn, Adina said. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, wait till the silver thing. Yeah, the silver thing. The silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs>